So, may we start? Is it okay with everyone? Perfect. So, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Time has come for the start of our, our next round table or sort of almost round table debate called Beauty in the Public Space. And it is my pleasure here to have three distinguished guests. I'm going to introduce them and please if I leave out anything important, you know, don't hesitate to interrupt me, fill whatever I forgot, and then we move on to the first question. So I will go alphabetically. So first, I would like to introduce Dotsand Peter Gallus. Mr. Gallus is an evangelical theologian teaching at Charles University in Prague. He's also a vice dean of Evangelical Theological Faculty at Charles University, uh, and he's also evangelical pastor. Uh, he's primarily concerned with contemporary theological, uh, philosophical and ethical issues. He's focusing on questions of epistemology, which is the relationship between our knowledge and reality, theological anthropology and Christology. Uh, I would like to also welcome uh, Professor Vít Hloušek. Mr. Hloušek studied history and political science at Masaryk University. Uh, he became a professor of European politics in 2015. Uh, he's a department head at the International Institute of Political Science uh, at Masaryk University. He's an author and co-author of numerous books and studies, as is Mr. Gallus. Uh, and he's focusing on contemporary European political history, of, on, uh, on political systems of various European countries and party systems. And I would probably should also mention in relation to culture that he uh, focuses on a relationship between music and politics uh, in the regimes of the 20th century, right? So we may get to that later. And late, uh, finally, I would like to introduce Dr. Jan Jandorek. He's a sociologist, old Catholic priest, writer, and currently also an editor of Forum 24. So you can read his various commentaries on current events almost daily. Actually, daily, right? <laughs> it's a daily, go. yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, he's an author of seven novels and many other various non-fiction books, mostly dealing with uh, spirituality or sociology. So I hope I got everything right. Uh, and so we have three distinguished guests from various fields of study. And uh, I would like to separate this debate basically into three parts because there are numerous ways in which we can discuss beauty in the public space. So first is uh, beauty in your daily life, in your day-to-day -day work. So how do you think of the term beauty? How does it relate to your work? Because you know we have history, political science, theology, sociology, journalism. Do you, in your various fields and specializations, think about beauty? Is it something do you do, that you consider in your daily jobs and um, professions, please. Who would like to start? <laughs> it should be on. Is it on? Yeah, it's, it's on. Hello, everybody. I can start, but I'll be a little bit abstract because I am considering beauty in, in my work, in my daily daily work, but I deal a lot with the beauty of thought. So it's a little bit abstract, but at least to me, some thoughts can be really, really beautiful and I can enjoy it almost physically. So that's uh, somehow uh, the, the primal motivation of my, of my work and uh, uh, something which fulfills me with joy. Okay, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Talking about political science, I'm not sure to what extent there is a space or room for beauty. Uh, I remember I was once reading a paper, like a serious scientific paper on the humor in politics, which was boring and absolutely without, without any sense uh, of humor at all. And I'm afraid that when we look at the contemporary political science, we would see the same situation when we ask about the role of beauty, which doesn't mean that beauty is not a category. 
uh, especially uh, when uh, I talk about uh, the tiny part of my work, uh, which is on the edge between contemporary history and, and politics, uh, there, there might be some intersections uh, even with beauty, but more with aesthetics as the category that can be politically uh, driven, politically motivated, as Martin said, I'm sometimes trying to uh, talk about or write about the relationship between music and uh, and totalitarian regimes of the 20th century. Not in general. I'm I'm just uh, fascinated by the swing music, jazz music, and that's my field, a very narrow field of study. So there there is some space for beauty, not that much in in the general political science. I guess that maybe you will correct me, but I guess that contemporary uh, social sciences they are not that much interested in beauty any longer. And when it comes to the methods, uh, we generally prefer uh, quantitative treatment uh, of uh, our subjects. Well, uh, this, this is sometimes even against any concept of beauty. So uh, from the point of view of my last job, uh, it means that in the media, is a beauty a little uh, problem uh, because uh, of course, we need the beauty, our newspapers, uh, our journals, our internet, it all should be beauty, very nice, very nice, because we need some money from public and uh, somebody uh, must uh, to buy it. So it uh, should be, it must be very, very nice and very, very beauty. Uh, it's only one side. The second side is that uh, the same of our interest is not a beauty. Uh, it's not nice, uh, uh, it's not uh, anything what uh, we want uh, to live in our, uh, in our life. So it's a war, it's a crime, it's some psychological problems uh, of a people. Uh, we know that this uh, catastrophic apocalyptic themes are, um, the people are very interested in. Uh, in one of our newspaper, uh, we had uh, some column, and uh, the name was Good News. Uh, this column had uh, this, this area uh, only only two pieces, yes, and uh, one of this uh, news was a, was a fake, yes. <laughs> so, so <laughs> or mistake, or mistake uh, from the point of economy, yes. Uh, some, some, some disasters advice what is good and what was uh, quite another. Uh, so uh, I have uh, some uh, in a conflict, so to speak, uh, uh, to speak nice about very ugly things, yes. Uh, I am happy that uh, my uh, second profession uh, is the sociology, uh, so the theme is also the uh, ugliness, <laughs> ugliness uh, uh, in social space. And I think it's, uh, it's a more important for me, and more interesting for me. So I, I can confirm that, that uh, all the uh, more uh, or I encounter usually not the uh, beauty of thought, but rather silliness of thought or the ugliness of lies. So that's uh, what we have to deal uh, with as theologians, theologians as well. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to follow up on this with a question of what you three have in common, which is that you are very accomplished writers, all of you, all the three of you. And we were now talking about beauty in the sort of beauty of thought, but how about uh, beauty in literature? Because you very often in your jobs have to write under huge pressure and uh, very huge amounts of papers you must produce in your careers. So uh, how, how is it with beauty? Do you, do you have time to consider to consider it properly, or, or what do you require to be able to consider it? Because maybe so it could be advice to, to us younger people who are just sort of starting with writing and very often find ourselves in huge stress and don't really, uh, you know, we're bashing 
over the head ourselves because like we 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 think like we don't have time for it we we don't have means to think about it properly what we're doing sometimes so having the mic in my head maybe i can start uh, just by coincidence of course uh you know uh I'm not producing any novels. What I'm writing uh, uh, is, is the, is the, is the uh, scientific uh, literature, the, the, the products of the research and so on. And here I would say that uh, beauty might be more or less uh, equal to clarity of uh, what you would like to express. So which means that, okay, you would like to say something, so, so try to find a way which uh, makes your argument as simple as it can be, as, as clear as it can be, uh, and uh, as uh, understandable to the readers who might have diverse opinion on it. And then, of course, you have to build uh, the substantiation based on the literature and based on the empirical examples under your scrutiny. And then maybe uh, the second thing that might have some relationship with the with the beauty in academic writing, uh, whenever possible, try to think about your subject, try to think about what you are writing, uh, what, what, you are, what you are trying to express. To try to find some, some kind of story behind it. Because you can, you can make even quite a scientific article, quite a scientific paper into some sort of story. Story helps uh, the reader, maybe it's not uh, the most important function of the beauty, but again, it's a function of clarity, it's a function of uh, understanding what you are trying to say, what you are trying to sell to your readers. So, so these are two things that might be in some relationship with beauty, but otherwise, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not, uh, I, I don't feel comfortable to give any advice to, to anyone who would like to utilize beauty in the academic writing, because uh, all the people who are reading what I produce, they are quite typically correcting many of my sentences uh, because of the lack of beauty, basically. <laughs> but I think what you just said was very beautiful. So. It's, it's, oh. Well, but it's exactly so. I fully agree uh, with you. I think that uh, beauty uh, needs a little bit slower flow of time. You just need time for beauty. and. Um, the motto of all academic work, publish or perish, goes directly against it, uh, because you need a little bit more time to write a clear, uh, thought through text, and you need to uh, you need time for perceive to perceive a good text. You cannot read it just diagonally, as we uh, very often, I assume, uh, very very often do, because we must do it uh, this way. Uh, a nice analogy or parallel would be would be sports. Uh, now, uh, if you watch ice hockey or football or, or whatever, uh, there can be beauty as well. But it's uh, very often so swift that you need to replay, replay in slow motion to enjoy the pass and the scoring, the goal or whatever. You just need a slower flow of time, which is exactly uh, what we miss in our academic work. I think a lot. So time. <laughs> uh, we media, uh, we have some problem that we have no time. Yes, uh, no, 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 no time, and uh, all should be done very, very quickly. Yes, because uh, the news are very quickly, and uh, uh, the processes in the in the world are very quickly, and with the internet is very m much, much worse. Yes. Uh, so when I was uh, uh, in uh, daily newspaper, uh, so uh, in commentary department, we had a time from 13 in the afternoon uh, to 7 uh, or uh, 8 in the evening and, and, and then stop, yes. Uh, but internet is uh, hour from hour and so on and so on. So nobody stop. <coughs> so uh, we have a time uh, uh, for some uh, deeper analysis. Yes, we uh, can say this expert on this expert uh, can say something uh, about the beauty, about the peace, uh, 
uh, about uh, some very complex uh, problem uh, in the science and so on. Uh, the problem is not on our side, it's on your side, like a scientists or politics uh, 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 and so on, because uh, we can uh, have a very deep experts with a great knowledge, but they are not able to express themselves and uh, uh, their ideas uh, uh, clearly and quickly. Uh, so, because uh, like we have a fast food, and uh, the fast food is exactly this, fast food. So, we, uh, in the field of beauty, we have a, a fast beauty, yes? Fast beauty, they are supermodels, they are heroes from war, heroes uh, till their end and the death and so on and, uh, and so. Uh, so, uh, time is not merciful for us. But uh, mm, the possibility is to be prepared. Yes. Uh, I, I don't mean only obituary, yes, uh, uh, but <laughs> of course. Uh, but, uh, but to have some circle of, of experts. And we know uh, he's good, uh, he's uh, deep, yes, uh, we can uh, say it, say it uh, very clear and, and friendly and the stories, because people like stories, yes, uh, uh, about people, about virus, about uh, and anything, anything. And uh, mm, beauty is uh, so dialectic thing, I think. Uh, because, uh, for example, a supermodel should have no wrinkles uh, in the eyes. But for Mother Teresa, we expect they, uh, she must have wrinkles in the eyes. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, the American president uh, mustn't be tired. But the Pope, yes, very tired. Yes, very tired with the burden of the whole world and the cosmos. Yes, uh, and, and so, so he can go slowly, yes. Um, <laughs> we Germans say, ganz erschöpft, yes. Um, so, there, there, uh, so uh, uh, time, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think that something positive has to be said about beauty in the sciences and social sciences. Look around, you know, ladies and gentlemen, just look around. This is a beautiful place. And typically, not always, but sometimes the conferences are taking part at su such nice places. So there is a certain beauty that can have some indirect impact on us, the scientists. And then there is something you already mentioned. Uh, there might be a beauty uh, in, in the dialogue. Sometimes it happens that you find someone worth uh, of communication, worth of sharing ideas, worth of quarreling, argu arguing, and so on. And then, then, it, then, then even science might be beautiful when it turns into, into quite passionate and quite interesting discussion. So, so there is a beauty, it's not easy to capture it, but, but there is some, anytime it can be. Yes, so uh, as you mentioned, Mr. Holoshek, the, the beauty of the dialogue, and I think we've already sort of mentioned uh, the beauty of truth and sort of getting to the truth. Do you have that feeling sometimes in your work that you the feeling of satisfaction at the end of the dialogue? Uh, well, maybe sometimes more before I enter the dialogue. I have, uh, I have the feeling that, that I just now have it. I captured it clearly and distinctly and it's beautiful and all truthful. And at the end of the discussion, I have a, a very big need to uh, um, discuss a little bit more because it's uh, afterwards uh, not clear at all. Uh, so uh, the, the category of truth and beauty are both uh, very, well, ambivalent or, or uh, somehow, somehow liquid uh, or can be, can be interpreted in many different ways and or distorted. So that uh, the image of beauty and truth that sh should somehow be put uh, together can be can be actually very only only very temporal and that's in the discussion in my case the case 
Yes, there are many perspectives, and uh, it's nice to see from, from many perspectives things like some psychological test. Uh, we have now new uh, rooms for our, our medium, and uh, there is some room uh, down, and uh, there is some uh, stain on the wall. There are garbage there, and so there's a restaurant that is garbage with plastic, and the bottles, the bottles, the more bottles, and there is some stain, and I uh, made a picture of the stain, I uh, gave it to Facebook, and I, I wrote, it's a miracle, it's a Jesus, it's a Jesus, not Che Guevara, it's a Jesus, yes? Uh, and somebody said, no, it's, a, it's Karl Marx, <laughs> yes? Uh, and uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of association, uh, yes, with, uh, one, uh, with uh, one stain, uh, one stain, uh, and it's, uh, it was a dialogue. What can we see from uh, the same from the same picture? Yes. Uh, in reality, when we have uh, some squat with the squatters, yes, I can say so. It's so ugly. Yes, so the stains and the alcohol bottle. Yes, and the pale people. You know, this is so. You can see it. You know, they should go to school and to work and so. Uh, and uh, someone, someone see it like a symbol of a freedom, yes? So in, in, uh, no money, no hypotheques, uh, a lot of time, uh, and so on, a little romantic. But uh, it's, a, it's, the same, uh, it's the same building, yes? Very ugly for them, very nice. And the dialogue is uh, between uh, us, between these people and these people uh, inside. Uh, what is the meaning of this place? Yes. What is your future? What is the goal uh, uh, of all these things you are doing now? And so, and uh, uh, the dialogue in the end is a, is a, is a beauty uh, in, in this respect. Yeah, I'm curious what you will think about this, this, this discussion after, whether uh, it shall continue or not. Uh, uh, any, anyway, uh, you ask about the truth, and this is a very strange category in the contemporary social sciences. I mean, there are political philosophers, uh, they are still dealing, some of them at least, uh, they are still dealing with truth, uh, at least I hope. Uh, but we who are more on the empirical side of, of, the, of the research, uh, this is not a category that important, practically that important, because the contemporary science, social sciences, they are typically like not paying attention to the big issues and big questions and big topics. They are quite diverse, uh, looking at very narrow parts of the uh, empirical reality, trying to build the models that are explaining a couple of variables. And you know, when you take into consideration all this, uh, the, the, the question of truth uh, doesn't seem to be that important for the contemporary academic practices, which doesn't mean that it is not important at all. I just would like to stress that uh, uh, even I uh, it, is, it is similar to beauty. We, we, we are sometimes touching upon beauty, sometimes touching upon, upon the truth, but uh, more, uh, let's say, by coincidence than deliberately, uh, than, than, than by, by, by will. Thank you. Uh, as we're sort of talking about beauty in the public space, uh, how is it important to you, or how do you do you have time, and do you find solace in and and uh, uh, times of transcendence in uh, appreciating the sacred architecture, sacral architecture, uh, uh, in the, or is it or is the religion more about other things now rather than appreciating uh, the beauty of the of the churches and of the sacred buildings. <laughs> so I, I think that uh, we need uh, in a big space like the, the city, we need uh, some small space piece uh, where we can relax, yes? Uh, where is uh, no noise, where is no time, yes? So uh, every city needs some church or more churches and churches. 
the problem in Prague is uh, uh, so many churches are closed uh, because there are uh, so beautiful statues <laughs> uh, uh, that uh, it's a danger to let it open. Uh, but uh, it could be some uh, some uh, green room, some green green place. Yes, uh, uh, some water. Yes, it could be mm, some nice cafe. Yes, nice nice cafe uh, is some chapel for intellectuals. They can meditate there and uh, to make some dreams about the future world. It's so real, like a heaven, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, some reality in the soul of a man. <coughs> we need uh, this heaven in, uh, in our head, in, in our soul. So when we have some, uh, some real space, like a chapel, uh, like a bank in the park, like, a, a, like a one, one cafe or pub for someone, is the uh, sacred room. It means uh, he is uh, detached uh, from the normal space. And the time there is uh, slowly and slowly and slowly. And uh, I think it's uh, vital important, vital important uh, to have this uh, in uh, mm, in some reduction uh, building, yes, to, uh, into some fabric uh, in industry, uh, uh, in airport, to one place where is all uh, quite another, yes. And so the beauty which is uh, inside of a man uh, could be like a, like a spring, yes. When we are stressed, for me, uh, for example, for me, the symbol of hell is uh, Ipe Pavlova metro station uh, in winter. Yes, <laughs> when there is snow, maybe, and the rain, and all is dark, and the people are dark too. It's a hell for me. Yes, the metro station darkness is better. Yes, of course, it's better. It's not so terrible uh, uh, like a metro in Rome or in uh, in some Moscow metro like mausoleum. It's a normal check metro. I think that is okay, bright and so. It's not a chapel, of course, but, but it's it's better. Uh, but uh, we are we are we are depressed, and uh, we need to stop and uh, find find this this quiet place because. Uh, in another way, the demons inside us uh, uh, could use uh, this uh, noise and the stress, uh, like some stairs, and go upside and we hop, and, <laughs> and we are very, very bad people. <laughs> um, it would be sad uh, if uh, beauty and maybe possible sacredness of beauty would be linked only to one type or one form of reality or of spaces. I think beauty uh, is very much uh, linked uh, with variety. That beauty needs to have multiple dimensions, levels, fields. And uh, it's with the sacredness, uh, sacred spaces uh, as well. When I was a pastor, I visited quite a lot of people, and many of them told me, without being asked, you know, Mr. Pastor, um, I, go, I go into the woods. That's the church for me. I don't need to go to the church. I go into the woods, and there I have my own church. Well, uh, why not? Uh, my answer was, uh, why not? Um, but church and woods do not exclude a mutual it can be both, and you can once come to the church and other time go into the into the woods because sacredness and beauty needs this variety of possibilities. Sometimes you need the huge space of uh, huge mountains. Sometimes you need a small cafe just to sit into the corner and meditate your own stuff. So beauty needs to be linked with variety and multidimensionality. 
uh, I don't know, maybe I'm too profi profane to, to, to answer uh, such a question. Uh, maybe make it more interesting. Both, both of you are right, of course, and sometimes you can make your sacred space inside yourself. Uh, doesn't inevitably depend on the place you are, you are, uh, you are at. But uh, maybe the diversity is, is, the, is the key, because when I was listening uh, to the presentation on the uh, effort uh, to link uh, the, the church architecture with uh, the modern arts, uh, I, I fully understand your point, and I guess that I share it from, from many uh, perspectives. On the other hand, uh, still we have some people who are attending the churches, and not all of them are comfortable with these modern, really beautiful uh, buildings. Many of them would prefer San Silpis, for example. Well, what are we to do with this? Maybe we shall offer diversity of the sacred places. Maybe we can uh, use this diversity to demonstrate, okay, there are some new patterns that are more beautiful, that are more contemporary, that might touch upon something uh, in your mind or in your soul. Maybe that would be my answer. Let's let's keep let's keep the uh, sphere of the sacred places uh, diverse. Let's keep it open to new ideas, and on the other hand, let's 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 maintain some of the old patterns as well, because still there are some people who prefer what they learned uh, in in their childhood. Thank you. So far, I was sort of trying to move the question towards architecture, and now, would, uh, now I would like to ask you, because at least about two of you, I know that you're fans of jazz music, and I would like to generally talk about culture and um, beauty in the sort of contemporary culture, maybe. Well, where do you uh, find it? Do you have time for it? What does it mean to your life in in you, because all of you are sort of very, uh, you have a very, um, how do I say it? You're very busy in general, so <laughs> uh, do you have time for it? Well, uh, it depends uh, on the period of the year. Typically in May, it's not the best uh, part of the year to enjoy lots of culture because of the uh, logic of academic uh, periods. But generally, of course, uh, culture culture uh, is something that I try to enjoy from time to time. Uh, it depends, uh, I am not uh, attached only to something that can be called a high culture. I am, you know, I'm a kid from 1980s, so I love pop culture and I, I will uh, uh, take pop culture as, as a part of the culture, I, I think, until the end of my life, because it makes sense to me. Uh, well, on the, on the other hand, uh, culture is a very interesting topic when we are talking about beauty, because I understand that there are many uh, quite modern concepts of culture that are stressing political functions of the culture, social functions of the culture, economic functions of the culture, I still believe that there has to be some space for beauty when we talk about, about culture, be it the pop culture or be it the high culture, uh, high arts or, or something quite popular. Still, still beauty uh, shall be part of uh, all this. Uh, what it means practically, where well, sometimes a good music, sometimes a nice building to walk around, uh, sometimes an interesting book, uh, it depends uh, on, on what's available, but uh, yes, culture culture is important, and culture is important not only uh, for the culture itself, culture can compensate from, from this hectic, uh, let's say, not profession, only professional, but even private life. I mean, culture can be among uh, the, the ways how to, how to slow down a bit and how to contemplate something, how to try to like step out of your daily routine, for example. So this is something, uh, these are reasons why I think the culture matters still, and that why culture shall be connected to beauty still, despite all these postmodern notions uh, that culture has other functions. Well, thank you. This brings me to uh, two uh, ideas. One is rather principal, one is quite subjective and personal. The principal uh, idea I got uh, due to your uh, word now 
as just that we need to be aware of that our category of beauty is not only shaped but construed by our culture. It's a culture, uh, not only shape, but it's a cultural construct. We learn or um, internalize what is beautiful due to our cultural, uh, cultural space. And in, uh, when we move into an, another culture, we would probably realize very quickly that their image of, of beauty or their category of beauty is wholly, wholly different from, from ours. So it's uh, nothing absolute, it's nothing somehow given from above. Uh, what we consider for beautiful is culturally shaped and construed. That's, uh, to me, it's, it's a quite, uh, quite important thing to, uh, to hold. And then uh, to answer uh, your uh, original, uh, original question, the idea which, which came to my mind is that uh, I indeed love uh, jazz and swing. And this kind of music, uh, I like to hear it. I try to practice it. But every time I play guitar or piano, I have my whole life the problem how to do it in a beautiful way. <laughs> Culture. Uh, <laughs> 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 they are laughing. <laughs> so, uh, I'm a, a little lazy to go to some concert hall and uh, to have a think uh, uh, before what I just read is good for it and, and to go one hour there and uh, Stay there for two hours, and I can I can brush yes and so and many people. I'm I'm a little neurotic, so there noise, there noise, there noise, and some music in there. And so, and one hour back, yes, and uh, uh, but uh, for me, very important books from my childhood, yes, because uh, books is a very very practical tool uh, of a culture. Yes, uh, it was a some 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 joke. Um, uh, it was a picture. I can only uh, only say it. Uh, there is a boy and the girl, and the boy has a book, and uh, the girl uh, is asking, "So, what's the problem?" And they say, "No, I'm I'm. <coughs> how can I I do it? Uh, what how can I and I and I type yes some some password this password." And uh, the girl said, so what your password? You can open it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the boy opened it and said, oh, so interactive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's true, the book is very interactive. Yes, not electronic, electronic too, but not so much like paper book. Uh, it's, it's very interactive. I can uh, uh, stop it every minute and continue and take it uh, to metro, yes. I can go back and I no need some mouse and then just scroll where was this, so, and uh, some what, what is what, and so, then. no, I can only, only. Uh, so the, the book is a friend, is a friend of, of a man, yes, is a, is a very, very, very special tool. Uh, very special tool. Uh, so, of course, uh, it's uh, some uh, para world for the man. I can sit at home and can read uh, about uh, some nice things about Versailles uh, and the French kings, about Stalin, yes, and some self help literature about I could be like a Stalin or like, oh, sorry, uh, like John Paul II and so, yes. Uh, yes so, uh, it's uh, angelish and devilish uh, tool too, yes. Another world and supernatural world uh, from the books in my mind, from my mind uh, to uh, reality. But, uh, uh, I, I love the books, it's a culture for, culture for me. On the first, on the first place. There is a one joke about the books, which I, I don't know who's the author, but it's a nice one. Uh, uh, outside the dock, 
the book is the man's best friend. Inside the dog, it's too dark to read. <laughs> no, but you are right. The book is very nice. You can you can touch it. the book is very interactive. You can touch the book. You can smell the book. When you bu buy a new book, it, it smells in a fantastic way. Typically, you can use it like a weapon. You can use it like a tool which will fix something. You know, when we, when you will put uh, the book uh, to the to the table, for example. Well, absolutely, it's fantastic because they are flexible, so you can you can compensate for some, you know. That that no, no the book uh, definitely anything made of paper, it's it's worth of, you know, playing with and maybe may sometimes even reading. Um, I'm sorry, my son would say except it's made of paper. Uh, my son would say probably now, uh, all these things you can you can do with a MacBook as well. Thank you. Yes. No, how, how heavy is MacBook? Can you kill someone with MacBook? I know some books. <laughs> <laughs> there is, there, there is one. So. Okay, <laughs> then that, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, one last question before I open, uh, give opportunity to you to ask our guests. And it's kind of a follow up to this one. Uh, yesterday, uh, I was uh, with my colleagues at the dinner and we were sort of uh, talking about the things from our childhood, like how we read the comic books and comics in the magazine ABC and uh, what it sort of means to us now and uh, how sometimes we return to something from our childhood and we find out we can't actually read it anymore, it's absolutely terrible. But do you have like one specific thing, it might be a book, it might be something from your childhood that might not be generally considered like it's really beautiful, it's really good, but it is good and beautiful for you and you find yourself returned to it and it gives you some sort of um, tr transcendental experience maybe? I'm afraid that my worn out teddy bear doesn't bring any transcendental experience. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a song my grandmother sang to me. It's, it's something special. And I, I haven't heard it since she passed away. So that would be maybe uh, something really special for me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, because I've read uh, also a lot of a book about Soviet pilots and. Uh, World War II and um, mm, about airplanes, uh, 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 some fairy tales, Russian English, the Russian fairy tales, it was terrible, yes, it's not like Czech fairy tales, it's uh, quite horror. Uh, I liked, uh, I liked, uh, Karol Czapek, I was a child, but I didn't know that uh, it is a duty to read it, so I read it voluntarily. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, from the time I have uh, in, my, in my memory uh, a lot of sentences of uh, Karl Chapek about society, uh, about, uh, uh, about the war, uh, about uh, uh, some uh, jobs, about journalists, yes. Uh, uh, I realized that he was uh, true when uh, uh, he said that uh, every profession is so because uh, someone wants to do something, uh, but only journalist uh, has journalist uh, accidentally. Yes, I can translate it from Czech language. Uchytil se u novin. He is accidentally in the newspapers. Yes. No doctor, no lawyer, no, no actor is accidentally on the scene uh, um, in the hospital. Uh, but uh, I think um, uh, a lot of people in the newspapers uh, are there accidentally. Um, so it, it, it was a this, this sentence uh, by uh, Karl Chapek. It, it, I realized it's very, very true from my childhood. <laughs> By the way, there is a nice book on what you asked about. Uh, it was written by Umberto Eco. And what's the English, what would be the English name? Mysterious Flame of the Queen uh, Loana. 
and it's a book about the man who lost the memory because of some accident and trying to get it back. He, he travels uh, to the countryside where he spent his childhood during the fascist period, late 1930s and 1940s. And he's digging inside a sort of archive where he's finding these comics and books and you know, the flashes of the memory are coming back. And it's not only about uh, what you can remember from your childhood and how you remember from your childhood. It's a fascinating account on the fascist aesthetics vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, children and how they tried to, to impact on uh, the creation of, of the early political uh, attachments and, and, and the positions adopted by Italian children. So maybe maybe this might be, again, we are talking about a book, so definitely books are beautiful. All right, thank you very much. And uh, now it is time for you to ask. So I will give you a microphone and you can go for it. Uh, thank you all. Um, this is a, again a question for all of you really, um, because kind of in, in what you were saying, especially at the beginning, it didn't seem that you found there was much space for beauty in public space, at least in the public spaces which you occupy. Um, or at least it's not present. And I suppose my question would be, perhaps why isn't it present? Or is it present when we don't see it? Or perhaps even thirdly, should it be present? Or would it be better if it, if it was? That's a difficult question, actually. I don't think that there is no beauty in the public space or less beauty than wished for in the public space. There are many beautiful uh, beautiful places, many beautiful buildings uh, available in the public space. Uh, I was more talking about uh, how the beauty intersects with my profession, and then I have to say that there is, again, that there is, there is no, no much relationship between the beauty and what I'm doing. Uh, uh, in my academic uh, profession, but otherwise uh, I wouldn't be that critical about uh, the public space around us. Uh, I think that uh, there are many, many, many examples, uh, both historical and contemporary, that uh, you can uh, build something beautiful even in the public space, even even ordered by the politicians, etc. So I would I wouldn't be that pessimistic about about beauty in the public space. I mean, because it would seem to me that, not as a political scientist, but as a, as a person who <laughs> is interested in politics and affected by them, that, I mean, beauty is quite important for politicians, at least the r rhetoric of beauty. Um, so it's kind of interesting that it doesn't come into the work of political scientists. It's not a criticism, it's just interesting. I mean. Because when you, when, you, when you, especially when we are talking about democratic politics, then, then the beauty is present in the discussion, but as a very general category. Uh, it, it is, of course, uh, always stressed that we have to build something beautiful on the public space. We have to spend our money on something that, that makes aesthetical sense, uh, but it doesn't mean anything particular. And frankly, uh, sometimes it is better when the politicians are not uh, like intervening directly into what is beauty and how shall a beautiful building look like, how shall a beautiful public space look like. Well, well sometimes it's better to, to leave it on someone else. Does anyone else want to have a go? I prepared some remarks, uh, 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 and so maybe one uh, of this could be useful. Uh, it's about poet Vítězslav Nezval. Vítězslav Nezval uh, uh, dedicated a poem to a tank on a pedestal, the tank 23. It uh, was a famous legendary tank uh, from the World War II. Uh, maybe the first tank of the Red Army in the in the Prague and so on, and this tank was uh, uh, like a statue, like a statue in the in the, in the center of the city, not so far from here, and uh, he dedicated a poem to this tank. Uh, in Czech language is of course better, uh, but uh, in English so. 
In that old city of portals, baroque statues and banks, for 10 years now, I have been meeting a tank on my way from Petrin. Like a statue, like a tombstone, like a monument to a glorious time, like a throne or a crown in Prague's Smikov. Uh, when we remember, it was a military machine, yes. And uh, I, in my remarks, uh, I have uh, a tank is a weapon. Let's put it in way. But it doesn't have the beauty of a knight's sword, nor does it have the technical beauty of an aeroplane, which might not obey the laws of nature to stay in the air. Know that the ugliest planes are those with the most powerful engines. The laws of aerodynamics must be overcome by force. A tank is a machine so terrible that it often can't reach the battlefield under its own power. It must be transported there by train. Uh, so, and uh, from this uh, piece of metal, from this machine, the former regime uh, made a statue. It was quite another aesthetics. But uh, I, I can understand it uh, because the tank uh, can be a symbol, can, uh, could be a symbol uh, of, uh, of a victory. It could be a symbol of some bravery and so on. Uh, but uh, one thing uh, is missing there, the people, the, the, the person, the people were inside of this machine. And we know that the name uh, tank uh, for this uh, military machine is from real tanks. So the, the great battles uh, for fuel, yes. Uh, uh, so uh, as a crypto, uh, 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 crypto name to not know what is really is, but it uh, looks like a tank. And from the tank to make a statue like a baroque, like a baroque uh, uh, statue, uh, some um, column uh, from the uh, from the time of a plague and uh, trinitary and so it's it, it, it's it's a very very. Maybe airplane, airplane means knives, but I'm not sure in the, in the center of the city. Hmm. <laughs> I've learned that poem in, when I was in school. Oh, yeah. It was really famous. But, um, I just want to add uh, one more observation. I'm not a Prague native. Uh, I've been living here some 10, 10 years now. I put all my stays in Prague together. And um, to answer your question uh, of uh, beauty in the in the public space, well, um, living in Prague, you just cannot say they, there uh, is some huge problem with beauty in the public space because people from all over the world come to Prague because it's uh, beautiful. And I, as a non-native of Prague, I can confirm this um, every week. I just. Uh, um, still say uh, to myself and I'm fascinated that I can live here. Prague is uh, objective, or not subjective, but in, in some rankings, uh, it's always among top 10 best cultural places uh, in the world. So uh, there obviously is a lot of beauty in our public space. And uh, the question is whether we are able to perceive it, to, to shape it, to maintain it, to improve it maybe. See another hand here, so thank you. Thank you very much to all three of you. My, I have a comment to follow up on, on team questions, really. I got an impression from your answers that uh, when we are talking about beauty in public space, that we are talking about objects mostly and buildings. And Honza mentioned that there is a person in a tank, so I would like to take out the person out of the tank and actually focus our attention to to a person, to people, actually, as, as beauty in, in public space, that there are many initiatives and projects done by, done by people that are beautiful, I think, that, and that also gives rise to hope, you know, when young people are interested in being engaged in, in public space. I think that's, that's beautiful and that gives rise to hope. So this kind of embodied beauty, perhaps. Yes, indeed, there are people, uh, at least around me, when they come out into the public space, the beauty raises. 
but there are some where it's uh, otherwise. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> two, two, uh, one remark. <laughs> there is a little plane now in the Museum of the State in Amsterdam. They've placed uh, instead of a <laughs> tank, a, a, a plane. <laughs> um, my question is about uh, modern uh, suburbs and the uh, and, beaut and beauty. I feel often, uh, of I get the impression that there is so much boredom in 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 suburbs. Maybe I'm the only one, but then uh, it's not a question. But I want to ask uh, if you recognize it and of. Beauty would be the solution uh, against this, this uh, yeah, feeling of, uh, of uh, yeah, the stimmung of boredom. What, what, what is it with our modern times that are so much boredom? That, that's my uh, question. I often uh, ask myself, of I, I feel myself as a victim of this, and uh, I said, where can I get some compensation for this boredom that is so widespread? Well, suburbs, boredom, you are right, I think, uh, especially when we are talking about the modern suburbs that were uh, raised like, since the late 1960s, 1970s, up until today, generally. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether we are talking about so-called southern city in Prague or, or Almere. I remember when I was uh, traveling uh, through Netherlands via train, uh, one of the stops was Almere. And it was a city constructed since the mid 1970s. There are some beautiful buildings in the center, but then on the suburbs there are ugly, you know, narrow streets full of the similar like-minded, like-looking houses, and this this really looked boring to me, as as boring as our concrete uh, blocks of flats uh, built uh, in the normalization period by the by the communist uh, rule. What what to do with this? I don't know. Well, maybe. Maybe you gave the answer. This, this, this shall be uh, like uh, the boredom shall be compensated by by what the people will do. I, I sincerely hope I don't know, uh, but I sincerely hope that uh, there is more life inside these ugly buildings than than outside on the public space. That might be uh, the solution. I, I don't know. I don't believe in in great political solutions that will get rid of all this boredom at once. Suburbs. Uh, I, I'm from Southern City too. Yes, and there are some different parts of the uh, of the south uh, of Prague because I took the part um, uh, which is uh, uh, near f f near uh, from the nature, very very nice nature, and uh, where the communists uh, met a metro, some job material. Uh, developed like a, like a wall, uh, a, a very, very high wall. And uh, there, 30, 35 years ago, uh, some specialists, they gave uh, some uh, small, um, bushes and so on. Uh, and uh, after after thirty years, there is a very uh, a very special very special uh, uh, flora, yes, and uh, it's a uh, kind of miracle there, and uh, there is uh, a lot of very very interesting things. So the, this part of the south of Prague is not every. So it's so that um, a big city, a metropole, is like a creature, and the creature uh, want to eat uh, everything. Uh, what is about small village? Hum, I'm eating it. It's a city, yes. And uh, there is uh, some cross in the fields, and so and so on. But there are some uh, islands in the uh, uh, in the 
on and doing uh, flats and flats and buildings and buildings. We can go there. And uh, we see there is uh, some small chapel now. Yes, there is building, there is building, yes. And there's a chapels now. Yes, and, that, uh, and so uh, when uh, there are uh, these small islands of the former country, the former villages. Uh, so it's not boring, yes. Uh, uh, it's uh, very uh, surprising for the people. And uh, it's uh, for the for the life people there is a uh, very important. I think these uh, living uh, islands from the past and in, in, in the present. It definitely starts uh, <coughs> with the people, but there must be a space where people can meet. I think the, one of the big problems of the suburbs is that people uh, just live there somehow separately, privately. And they don't meet, just create uh, small spaces where people can meet, children's playgrounds, pubs, ca cafes, whatever, football, whatever. Any other question? If there is a nice, because the, we have time, I, s I have one more question, which hopefully will sort of round it up to the beginning. Um, yesterday I had a short paper on British philosopher Sir Roger Scruton and uh, his work uh, that he did in uh, commission, architectural commission in Britain, uh, where they were trying to get uh, sort of uh, buildings, getting buildings more beautiful, how to make British architecture more beautiful, how to get rid of the blocks without the streets, without the public space where people can meet and create commu communities. And one of the things he always criticized was uh, the workspaces, modern workspaces, which are very often open, you have no privacy, you can hear everything, Everybody can see you from every direction. You feel yeah, like you're under sort of constant, mm, constant. Somebody's always like keeping an eye on you. Somebody likes it because it's like um, because it's like in a public library. It motivates you to actually do some work. But so, in relation to your work, what do you find more beautiful? Do you like the solitary spaces of a private office at a university? Or uh, do you like the, the open space where all the journalists and editors are running with ideas and news and um, what, do you, what do you prefer? I need three spaces, basically three types of, of space. I need my small chamber, my small room where I can, where I can just sit and think and work by myself. Then I need a floor where I meet my other colleagues just to say a few words or to discuss or to knock on their door and discuss something uh, really important. And uh, then I need uh, the seminar room where I meet my students. Where is some a little bit bigger auditorium. I've never met there any journalists, but anyway. Um, I need these three types of spaces. I realized uh, very clearly that I need these three types of spaces during Corona times where, where only my private uh, room was possible and nothing else. So I really missed both uh, the other uh, spaces and it's absolutely crucial to me. Well, I don't have any, any direct working experience with the, with the real open space, so. I still don't know. I, I guess I, I would survive. I would keep my uh, my, my my headphones on with some Dick Eddington, Woody Herman in, and it would be fine. But anyway, uh, I mean, when you are writing something, it's apparently fine to have some small space for your own. But uh, I must say, enjoying my own office uh, at the academia, uh, I sometimes miss uh, the situation when we were sitting like three or four together. It was. Uh, more lively, so I would I would be somewhere in between. I don't think that you need uh, your private space all, all all through the working period. Uh, I think that it's nice to meet some people from time to time. Uh, I worked only for two weeks uh, in some open space, 
and uh, it was a terrible, it was an open space, like from NASA space agency, yes, and there were some directions on the wall, what all is forbidden, yes, it's forbidden to have a coffee uh, on the table, it's forbidden to have a clothes, uh, uh, to, to have some uh, personal things on the table, and uh, well, is some stain from the coffee uh, uh, on the and the flat. So immediately, immediately, you can call for a cleaning, uh, cleaning team to manage the situation and so on. And so um, I'm happy it was only for for two weeks. Yes, because uh, it was a uh, it was a road to Bohnice Psychiatric Psychiatric Hospital. Um, so now it's now it's better. Uh, I have an advantage, I, I can do uh, s some job from my home, yes, uh, some, in the, some in the office, but in the old, uh, old home in the center of, of Prague, so uh, it's not a problem now. But uh, mm, I think it has no future, this big, big rooms, yes, in this style. All right, if there are no more questions or does anyone still want to ask something? Okay, uh, I thank you for your questions. I thank my distinguished guests here, Professor Vít Hloušek, Dr. Petr Galus, and Diana Andourek. Thank you very much. Applause